In just a few short weeks, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is finally going to be releasing on Nintendo Switch. A direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, there's a lot that's still a mystery about Link's next adventure, which will seemingly see the series protagonist travelling up to the sky, deep below the earth, and creating mechanical monstrosities everywhere in between. It's fair to say that, as Tears of the Kingdom's release approaches, my obsessive love for The Legend of Zelda series has been reignited this past few weeks. I've been replaying Breath of the Wild, I've been replaying Age of Calamity, I've been watching series lore videos on YouTube, and I've been going down the rabbit hole of creating my own red string conspiracy theories about the series as a whole. So today, I'm going to let you all in on a closely guarded secret. A secret only someone obsessively sleep deprived and Zelda lore saturated would be able to see hidden in plain sight. There's a secret Legend of Zelda timeline that Nintendo does not want you to know about. One that neatly overlays on top of their official canon timeline from Hyrule Historia, additions and alterations and all, without conflicting in any meaningful way. Today, I let you in on the secret of the left-handed, right-handed, ambidextrous Link timeline split in the Legend of Zelda series. So, let's start off with the official information about left-handedness in the Legend of Zelda series. This is the information that you probably know, and the way that you were probably brainwashed into thinking about this information. In most of the Legend of Zelda games, published prior to the Wii release of Twilight Princess in 2006, series protagonist Link was a left-handed hero. When Twilight Princess was ported from the GameCube to the Wii, which is a motion-controlled console, Nintendo decided that, as most players of the game would be right-handed, it made sense to make Link right-handed so that players could swing their right hand to swing their sword, and feel in sync with the hero of the series. They achieved this by flipping the entire game world, creating a mirrored version of their entire video game to mechanically make Link right-handed. The next mainline entry in the series, Skyward Sword, was also a motion-controlled game, this time with more of a focus on one-to-one -one sword fighting motion. As a result, Link was kept right-handed. While the next mainline entry in the series, Breath of the Wild, was no longer motion controlled, Link remained right handed in the new title. Link was now officially right handed in the mainline console series going forward, as this mechanical change for two motion controlled games was just considered canon for consistency in all future Zelda releases. Seems simple, right? Well, no. Because I have been doing a lot of research on this topic, and I think there is a lot more at play here than a simple mechanical change. I think something happened that created a new canon for the series, like, in lore, with narrative explanations, and it's nothing to do with, like, any of the reasons Nintendo have told you. The simple narrative Nintendo would have you believe doesn't account for the fact that A Link Between Worlds doesn't feature a right-handed Link, despite being released after Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess. Nor does it account for the fact that, and nobody talks about this, there's an entire branch of the official Zelda timeline in which Link is ambidextrous, a trait that never appears outside of that one timeline split. So sit back and let me tell you a tale of the Legend of Zelda timeline, and how Link's dominant hand is actually, definitely, an important plot point to understanding the series lore. So, let's start off with Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword is the first title in the Legend of Zelda timeline, as we currently understand it. You could argue that there was a legendary hero that existed before Link in Skyward Sword, the hero who fought alongside the goddess Hylia in Legend, but there's debate amongst Zelda historians whether that hero is Link himself, because of time travel elements that are present in Skyward Sword's narrative. In absence of evidence, we're going to assume for today that Link is the first hero of Legend in the series. The version we play as in Skyward Sword is the first canonical hero. In The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Link is a hero who is manipulated into his destiny by the intervention of the goddess Hylia, reincarnated in the form of the mortal Zelda, placing challenges in front of him that will develop a balance of courage, wisdom, and power, three attributes he would need to wield in equal measures in order to use the power of the Triforce without it splitting, granting one third of its power to three different people who each embodied one of its three elements. In order to keep it whole, and to wish for the destruction of Demise, the root of all evil in the Zelda series, Link was moulded to be able to wield the Triforce in its entirety. Skyward Sword's incarnation of Link is right-handed, a trait that we see at the very beginning of the series, that then disappears after this title for a fairly long time. 
I think we can look at the events of Skyward Sword and see the events that set us up onto the left-handed Link timeline initially. In Skyward Sword's finale, Link battles against the Demon King Demise. While Link does defeat Demise in battle, the victory is somewhat short-lived. Demise places a curse on Link and Zelda, forever locking his hatred and his malice into a cycle of rebirth that would see himself face off against those with the blood of the goddess and the heart of the hero across the eras to come. Now, I'm not going to argue that left-handedness is evil. Far from it. As an ambidextrous person myself, who was probably meant to be left-handed, but had it forced out of me by early formal education, I recognise that the idea of left-handedness as connected to evil is a bit of a nasty historical superstition, one that was used to marginalise and to other people with a harmless difference from the norm. However, I do think that the idea of left-handedness connected to sources of evil is interesting in the context of the Legend of Zelda series. It's not because I think Link is evil for being left-handed, or that being left-handed would make Link evil, but because I believe that Demise is evil, and I think that this is an inversion of that particular left-handed evil trope. Upon his defeat, the remnants of Demise's energy are locked inside the Master Sword, the Blade of Evil's Bane, and the only weapon capable of defeating the forces of darkness. Link is locked into a cycle of reincarnation, where he is going to need to wield a sword containing the remnants of pure evil, and the only blade strong enough to keep that evil at bay. In my eyes, there's a beautiful symmetry to the idea that left-handedness in the Zelda series is almost an inversion of the left-handed evil trope, as the series' hero is constantly reborn in a cycle where his left hand is wielding both the imprisoned form of a primal evil, but also the means to defeat said evil. Link's left hand is the weapon he uses to seal away darkness. Left-handedness is a heroic trait from this moment forward. Link's dominant hand, once he is reborn into this cycle of rebirth, is the hand societally associated with evil magic, but is conversely often the only hand capable of saving the world from right-handed forms of true darkness and malice. So, Link is originally right-handed, but I'm going to argue here that the reincarnation curse and Link's descendants' proximity to fighting evil cause our hero to be left-handed from here on out. It's not because he's evil, it's because he needs to use his left hand to defeat evil. This holds true in the Minish Cap, where Link reincarnates for the first time as a left-handed hero, as well as Four Swords, where Link remains consistently left-handed across being split into four versions of himself. No matter how many versions of Link you create, he's going to be left-handed, that's just how, how things are. Then we reach Ocarina of Time, the point where the official Hyrule Historia version of the Zelda timeline splits, and the first place where our Link-dominant hand timeline splits also. Ocarina of Time itself is pretty self-explanatory in this timeline, Link is reincarnated left-handed as usual, and tries to save the world. It's how this story ends that sees the dominant hand timeline split, and this is where things get a little complicated. Let's start with the adult Link timeline, as this is the easiest one to explain. Link goes back to his childhood, leaving Zelda in a timeline where the hero is absent, but Ganondorf is defeated and sealed within the Sacred Realm. For a long time, Link doesn't reincarnate necessitating the Great Flood of Hyrule due to the hero's absence. When Link is eventually reincarnated, the reincarnated Link is once again left-handed, as dictated by the cycle of reincarnation. In Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks, the cycle of reincarnation is unaltered. Next, let's talk about the Child Link timeline, the only timeline split where we return to right-handed Link, but not immediately. In Majora's Mask, we see Ocarina of Time's Link returned to his childhood, where Ganondorf is captured and imprisoned, leaving Link free to visit the land of Termina, a strange other world where things that we know are twisted and changed beyond recognition. Now, this is where my theory is going to take a bit of a wild turn. I'm not going to argue that because Termina is a weird, mirrored other world, that's somehow how we end up with right-handed Link after this. No. I believe there is a secret timeline split that Nintendo doesn't want you to know about, which takes place in Majora's Mask. We know from Ocarina of Time that time travel in the Zelda series creates split timelines. When a person travels back in time, they're not erasing the future that was, writing it over with something new by changing that past. 
For the adult Link timeline to exist, you know, as a split from Ocarina of Time, where Hyrule continues on without Link because he's left to go back in time and return to his childhood, we need to understand that traveling back in time in the Zelda series creates a split branch in time, leaving behind a world that continues on in your absence. This is important because it means that in Majora's Mask, every time that Link travels backward in time to give himself more time to save the residents of Termina from the falling moon, there's only three days to stop it, Link isn't actually rewinding time. He's not undoing the events and starting over, making it so that the moon never falls on the town. Link is traveling backward and creating a new timeline, leaving one behind where the residents of Termina are crushed to death without a savior. So here's where I think Nintendo is hiding something from you all. There is a timeline split created in Majora's Mask, which I will call the Termina is saved and the Termina is destroyed timelines. In the Termina is saved timeline, we see the release of Twilight Princess for the GameCube. And in the Termina is destroyed timeline, we see the release of Twilight Princess for the Wii. Yep, that's right. I'm going to argue that the two different versions of Twilight Princess are both canon, depending on the outcome of Majora's Mask. So I'm going to need to emotionally put my tinfoil hat on for this one, but bear with me. In the timeline where Termina is destroyed, there are some survivors. Not everyone stuck around the town until its last moments, and those smart enough to leave while they still had time remember the events of the final few days. They remember the sudden arrival of a stranger, wielding a sword in his left hand, promising to fix all of their community's problems, big or small, on his way to saving the world from destruction. They remember watching some of their loved ones refuse to leave Termina, confident that this young hero would save them if they just had faith. They watched as, at the last moment, the hero vanished, abandoning the community to its dark fate. In this timeline, not much changes in Hyrule. Termina obviously is impacted, both metaphorically and literally, but Hyrule itself is relatively unharmed. What does change, unfortunately, is sentiment toward left-handed people. Word spreads of the hero who abandoned the world, and every retelling states he was left-handed. Stigma against left-handedness begins to spread. What I am arguing here is that, in Twilight Princess on the Wii, Link isn't actually right-handed. He's left-handed and forced to use his right hand regardless. Now, you might be sat watching and thinking, this is ridiculous. This doesn't hold up to a few seconds of critical thought. And you might be right, but I do have more evidence for this theory that I do want to present you with because I think there is more evidence than you might expect for this. Now, one of the first things you kind of have to uh, acknowledge with this theory is that all of Zelda's guards in the Wii version of Twilight Princess are left-handed. Now, some might argue that they're all left-handed purely because they were right-handed in the GameCube version and that version was lazily mirrored to make the Wii version, but I think there's a lore reason for this reversal that might be more compelling. While anti-left-handed sentiment spreads across Hyrule, Zelda and the lineage of the royal family remember that their chosen hero over the ages has always been left-handed. Zelda is not swayed by this disinformation campaign, and still sees the idea of a left-handed knight as an honourable position, and one connected to the history of this land's greatest heroes. Zelda commands her knights to wield their swords in their left hands, out of respect for tradition, and in the hopes that if the hero is reborn under her reign, he will find himself in a position to learn to wield his blade in a way that he will be most skilled. Lastly, to finish off the youngling timeline, Four Swords Adventures obviously takes place in the GameCube slash left-handed slash saved Termina branch split of the child timeline. He's left-handed. It, it just goes on that bit of the, the split because he's left-handed. And that's child timeline done. Lastly, let's talk about the timeline that takes place where Link dies in Ocarina of Time. Because this timeline split is fascinating both for Zelda lore reasons, but also for dominant hand lore reasons. Link dying should not be able to coexist with the other timeline splits in Zelda canon, as that event occurring should prevent the timeline in which Link defeats Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time. 
the timeline where Link dies exists because of player action, and is able to be a split rather than the only canon progression path because the player can retry their save. Gameplay wise, this is how the Link dies, you know, timeline split can exist. This suggests that reloading a save after death is akin to time travel. We turn back time for this version of Link, but we do so leaving behind a timeline that continues to exist in which Link is dead and Ganondorf wins. Now, in canon, I like to think that this timeline branch exists because of divine intervention of some kind. Be it by the power of the Triforce of Courage, giving Link the ability to reverse time and keep fighting through determination, the intervention of the goddesses, or even the intervention of Demise's curse, seeking to spread its influence into more timelines by creating a split in reality. Whatever kind of intervention we're talking about, we enter a timeline where Link failed, but was able to keep fighting in a split reality. This kind of breaks the timeline a little bit, because this should not be able to exist, and that does some funky stuff to reality. In every single game in the Link Dies timeline branch, Link is ambidextrous. Sure, he primarily uses his left hand to wield his sword, but in every one of these games in this entire timeline, Link occasionally uses his right hand to fight with his sword, even if it's only for a single frame of animation or when facing one very specific direction. In A Link to the Past, Link occasionally swings his sword using his right hand when you're facing certain directions. The same is true for Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, even if this is erased in the Switch remake, seemingly. If you check Link's sprite sheet for Oracle of Ages and Seasons, Link has a couple of right-handed animation frames, including one triumphantly holding his sword aloft. In A Link Between Worlds, Link is ambidextrous. In a 3D game, it's not just the fact that these games are all 2D, this is a 3D game in this timeline in which Link is ambidextrous. Granted, it's only when he's merged into the wall as a painting and facing a specific direction, but he's occasionally right-handed. In the original Legend of Zelda for the NES, a couple of animations when facing specific directions show Link using his right hand rather than his left. And even in Zelda 2, Link appears to be right-handed when facing certain directions. Now, you might argue that this was purely a result of technical limitations of the hardware. These games were all top-down pixel art 2D Zelda games for the most part. And that is an argument that is definitely strengthened by Link's ambidextrousness being reduced to left-handedness in the Link's Awakening remake, but the fact that every game in this timeline split shows Link as ambidextrous in its original release, a trait that is not seen anywhere else in the series on any of the other timelines, to me seems like no accident. Now, I'm still puzzling out exactly what it is about Link's death that causes the ambidextrous timeline split. I'm confident that this timeline split exists, and that with the help of all of you down in the comments we can work out exactly what lore explanation that is for a timeline full of links that mostly use their left hand but occasionally use their right hand in limited situations. There's got to be a reason, because it's too consistent. And with that all done, that leads us to Breath of the Wild, and I suppose speculating about Tears of the Kingdom. Breath of the Wild, canonically, is stated to take place at the end of all of the current Zelda timelines, a placement that is somewhat necessitated by the game's references to events, locations, and objects that all appear in distinct timeline branches. While we don't know in canon what caused these timelines to merge back into one, we do actually know something interesting. While the Link that we play as in Breath of the Wild is right-handed, this timeline might have started with a left-handed Link. While there is some theorising in corners of the Zelda community that the hero seen in Breath of the Wild's mural depicting an ancient battle against evil might be depicting a Ganondorf turned good due to the figure's long red hair, until that is confirmed as canon, I'm going to consider that the figure depicted in this mural is a prior incarnation of Link, which seems like the easy and safe prediction to make. This may be disproven in the coming weeks, but for now, I find it interesting to work under that assumption when we're talking about left-handedness and right-handedness in the Zelda series. If you look at the figure in the mural, he appears to be wielding his sword with his left hand. There is no additional arm hanging by his left side, only one arm visible, raised, wielding the sword. 
I think there was a Link at the start of this timeline convergence who was left-handed. Now, I don't have all the answers as to why Link is right-handed by the time that Breath of the Wild rolls around. Maybe it's because Demise is escaping imprisonment in the form of Calamity Ganon and his corrupted malice, or maybe it's simply that merging the left, right, and ambidextrous dominant timelines caused Link to start cycling between dominant hands, as each timeline's energy fights for dominance upon reincarnation? I won't pretend to have all of the answers, but I do believe that Nintendo is hiding the existence of the dominant hand Link timeline splits from the Zelda fanbase, and that with your help, and conspiratorial ramblings, we can solve this clearly intentional puzzle as a community. There's still two weeks to go until Tears of the Kingdom releases. I need something to fill the time, and I suspect many of you are in the same boat, and thinking way too hard about the story reasons for hand dominance in the Zelda series is about as productive a way as I can think to spend that time. The alternative is I just keep clicking refresh on YouTube looking for more lore videos to watch and like, at least I can contribute something intelligent to the conversation this way.